So in this video, I'll be giving you a walkthrough of a simple TCP server written in Golang that will be an eco server, which means that whatever message we send to the server, it will be responding back with the exact same message. Right? This is a simple, simple Golang based project in which we have a go.mod file having no external dependency, which means we are writing everything from scratch. This asserts that fact. And then we, the execution starts from classic main.go file in which we have the entry point main function. Now, when we run go run main.go, this is where the execution starts. The first line of this says setup flags. Now setup flags in this, we are setting up two flags. These are the command line flags that we would be giving when we are executing something. So for example, when we start a database, we would want to specify the port at which our database would be listening. So the default value for this would be 7379. Basically Redis is 6379 and DiceDB is 7379. With this, I am also taking an input for the host, which means from which from which connections or from which IP should I be accepting the request? Should it only be local? I am using 0.0.0.0, .0, which means accept connections, accept incoming connections from every, from anywhere in the internet. Fine. Okay. When that is done, doing a simple print about rolling the dice because it's dice DB. And then this is where the execution starts. So here, this is what we have written, where the plan is that I'll be running a synchronous TCP server, which means I'll be starting a server that would accept TCP connections on the specified port. Let's see what it does. So if I open this, we see this particular function. So what it does, first log that just information, uh, then I'm having a variable called uh, con underscore clients. This variable is an integer which would hold the number of concurrent clients that are connected at the moment. It's just some extra information that we are collecting so that we can see that hey, indeed we are having large number of concurrent connections being accepted to our server. Now, this is where our actual socket programming starts. Now, the first thing that we are doing is we want our server to listen. So, we are calling net.listen. Uh, we want to listen onto a TCP connection at corresponding host and corresponding port. So as soon as this is executed, we would be, our server would start to listen on a particular port. And which means that any of the client can talk to the server on the port that it is listening on. Right? Okay. Once we, once our server is started, that's where we are running this infinite for loop. This is an infinite for loop whose job is that, hey, I'm infinitely waiting for new connections to be accepted to my server, right? So now any client, any client can, will be able to connect to this server. Now, for us to tell that, hey, I'm waiting for a new connection to be accepted. This is where we are making this blocking call called listener.accept. Now, listener was the instance of the server that we started and we are saying that hey for this over this socket I'm accepting a connection so I'm, this is a blocking call so until a client connects to the server my code execution would be waiting over here right listener.accept as soon as a client connects to this server on the port the the control flow moves forward and then we would have this this is where we are doing concurrent clients plus plus this typically means that, hey, now I have more than like, uh, now I have one, two, three n clients connected, right? Okay. When that is done, I'm just printing that message. This is an important one. When I'm printing the message that, hey, when my client connected to this server, this is the echo that is, or basically this is the server log that is going that, hey, a new client is connected to our server, right? Okay. Now, when that is done, I'm adding another infinite for loop within this. Now the job of this for loop would be that because what Redis would be doing or when we're writing our eco server, in any case, we would want our clients to continuously send us commands. For example, put this key, delete this key, get this key. This should be continuously happening, right? So this is what we are doing. We are running an infinite for loop for now in which we would have a client continuously sending us commands. And what we'd be doing, we would be re responding with the command that was sent. That is simple eco server. So if we get hello, we would be sending hello. If we get world, we would be sending world, right? Whatever we get as an input, we are sending it back as an output, right? So this is what this infinite for loop will do. So once we accepted 
the incoming connection from the client and then this infinite for loop runs which is continuously reading the message over this socket right okay so now what are we doing we are invoking or we are written this function called read command now what does this read command does so read command takes this socket connection and basically fires this system call called read now this read system call what it is doing is it is listening over this socket and it is trying to read message over this socket right so if there is no uh, if there is nothing that is coming in from my client this is a blocking call this would block until i get something from the client so i am continuously listening onto something onto the incoming messages that is there and this is a blocking call so until there is something this call the execution would halt over here right for that particular specific client so when we read it we put it in a buffer and we get the number of bytes read right so if there is any error we return the error otherwise whatever the incoming message we are getting we are converting it to the string and we are returning back so read command is basically making a blocking call waiting for the client to send us a command and then we are converting it to a string and basically sending it forward for our execution so now as the read command is done what are we doing as the read command is done in case there is any error which means that in case your client disconnects the connection in case there is any issue with the socket your error would not be equal to null which means that i want to close my socket connection i want to reduce my number of concurrent tcp connections that i am handling and i am printing this message that hey a client got disconnected which client the client whose remote address is this and now my concurrent clients are these many right that's that is what i am printing and in case it's the graceful termination where your client is sending an eof to terminate the connection i am simply breaking out of my for loop so which means that your your connection would be killed and what not right okay and if if your error was nil uh, sorry if your error was not nil which means that there was some error you are you are basically terminating the socket connection allowing someone else to pull that connection off right okay so once this is done right which means that there is like your error is like where your error is nil which means that you got something from the client maybe put maybe get maybe something you got some command from the client i'm just logging this command on my server the command that i got and i am triggering this respond now respond is also what we have written in which we are accepting this command and this socket connection and we would be responding something as like we would understand the command process it and then send the response over the socket for now because we are doing simple echo what our respond function would do is given the command given the socket connection i am just writing it back over the socket so whatever we got we are sending it back to the client as simple as this right and once that is done we are done with the response right because this is what we are trying to build we are building an eco server right whatever we get from the client we are sending it back to him right okay so once that is done this ends our infinite for loop and which is wrapped in the uh, under another for loop and this is an extremely simple eco server that we have written in golang right now if i were to execute this now let's see what happens if we execute this now just switching things back if i execute this particular part if i run go run main dot go you can see that it is printing rolling the dice starting a synchronous tcp server on 0000737 right now because it is an eco server let's say what i do is i connect to this tcp server and i send something i should be getting something back in return right so let's say i connect to this tcp server using netcat i'll fire local host uh, 7379 if i fire this let's say what you get in the console log what we are getting is we are getting that client connected with address 127001 with some socket so this is ephemeral port that it is using so a client got connected to this tcp server and now my concurrent clients is one so this asserts the fact that hey one client got connected now let's say we send this server something let's say i send hello what do i get so in the server you log you see that i received a command hello which is what we intended and in the response we also got hello back right so we send hello we got hello this is a simple eco server right so if i send world 
we get hello, we send world, we got world back. Right? Okay. Now if I send hello space world, we send it, we got it back. Pretty sorted? Right? Okay. We connected one client. Now let's see what happens when we connect another client over there. So let so now the concurrent connection should be, should be two. Let me fire that local host seven three seven nine. So if I do that now, let's see what happens. Oh, no movement on the server. Earlier, when the first client got connected, your server said, "Hey, a new client is connected with some address." This time, nothing happened. Why? Because our server is single threaded. We had for loop within for loop. So until your first client disconnects, like when your first client disconnects, then your second client will get a chance. Right? Now let's see this in action. If this is true, if I close this connection, which means if I fire control C, then the other client should be getting something. Right? So let me fire control C. And we saw that as soon as we fire control C, what we got? A client got disconnected. This, this particular client got disconnected. And now my concurrent client is zero. And then a client connected with this address. This is the second client that got connected. So if I just fire this, if I send, now my second client sends the message. Hello. Now it will get back. Hello. Right. But now if my first client again tries to connect, now this is blocking because our code is stuck in this infinite for loop where it can only accept one TCP connection at a time. It is not able to accept multiple TCP connections at a time. So what we have just built is we built a simple eco server that accepts one TCP connection at a time, runs an infinite loop where whatever we get as a command, we can do some processing and we send some response back. Right. This is what we have done. So now if my second server sends, let's say it sends Arpit. Right. Nothing happened because your server did not even accept the connection because it's not there in the for loop. Your server is not waiting on accept call. It is stuck in the for loop where it is continuously reading the message or it is it is trying to read the data over the socket. But your second client is not sending the data so it is blocked there. So if my second client sends world, I'll get back world. But as soon as the second client drops off, now what happens? Now from the first client, what happened? Your second client terminated, which means your first client got chance to get accepted. The TCP connection is accepted. Your server now says a client with this port connected and now my concurrent client is one. And the arpit command that we sent from the first client now, after reconnecting, it got that command and we responded it back. So this clearly shows that we just built an extremely simple TCP eco server that is single threaded and can handle just one connection at a time. Right? Okay. So now that we have this, let's have some fun and see what happens when we connect an, a Redis client to this server. Right? See, Redis client or the Redis CLI that you have, it is also like your Redis server is also a TCP server. And your Redis client can, is your rather your Redis CLI is connecting to that. It should be a normal TCP connection. With this eco server, we'll get to know what happens when a Redis client connects to our server. So let me fire that. SRC, I'll fire Redis CLI, Redis CLI on port six, uh, 7379. So on this port, this is the port of our server. So now what happens when Redis client connects to it? Let me just close this server so that I clear the screen and things become clearer for us. Okay. Now I'm connecting Redis client on port 73 or uh, to port 7379. Let's see what happens. So as soon as Redis client connected, some messages were exchanged. So Redis client sent something because we wrote an eco server, we would exactly know what your client sent when your server received that particular message, right? So when one Redis, when your Redis CLI connected, it sent message, uh, it sent message star one because this command was already printed, right? We got star one, some new line and then dollar seven and then command. What is this? This is what your Redis serialization protocol is all about. This is a command that Redis CLI sent to the server 
when the connection got established okay so now let me do a put k comma v i'm trying to so this is typical command that we fire on redis to put a key and a value let's see what happens when i fire this command your redis client i got a message on the server that says star 3 and then new line and then dollar 3 and then put and then dollar one k and then dollar one v so this is the uh, uh, this is what your redis cli sends to the server and what your redis server needs to understand this is called as redis serialization protocol and now in the next video we will understand what this protocol is which means that when we are starting our redis server how would our redis client talk to this redis server because redis server does not expose http endpoint the connection or the communication happens over raw tcp connection so there has to be a serialization protocol format in which your client or your cli talks to the redis server and which is what we would be building or we would be understanding in the next video and then implementing it in the next one right so that is it for this one if you guys found this amusing i would highly recommend you to code this thing out i gave an extremely detailed code walkthrough the repository is already there, you know, github.com slash dice db slash dice. Go to the first commit, check the source code out and highly recommend you to implement it on your own. Right. So that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much.